What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. So I generally enjoyed the movie. I don't really, well, I understand the negative reviews that the movie got, but I still under, I still enjoyed the movie nonetheless. And it wasn't too bad in my opinion. Like, we got Thor Love and Thunder, so this is a, a lot better than that movie in my opinion. It sets up Kang as a character, in my opinion, and I don't know if it sets him up as a threat, but at the same time, there is something sinister about having the same character as thousands of variants who aren't all good people. So here's a quick rundown of the plot. Stott is a famous Avenger who has now written a memoir on the events of Endgame. Hope is using PIM technology for the greater good, and Cassie is a political activist. After being bailed out of jail due to her activism, it is revealed that she is working on a device that can send a signal to the quantum realm, and it activates and sucks them in as a group, and Kang is now ruling the quantum realm. So that's basically the opening of the film, and they're just finding a way to get out of the quantum realm. Now, of course, this movie isn't without its flaws. Ultimately, I did enjoy this movie, but there are some things that are, you know, flawed from a writing perspective. For example, there are some unexplained mechanics of how the quantum realm works or functions. How are we so sure that there's there happens to be oxygen for the villain? I mean, for the humans, water. Where do they sleep? Um, the trope of sorry, not the trope. Um, the whole typical story of the hero's child criticizing the parent for not doing enough for society, even though, for example, Scott literally saved the universe and many people. And Cassie is like, oh, when are you going to start, stop, when are you going to not stop doing good, something like that. Um, the convenience of Cassie working on a quantum realm device from a basement, it's just all too easy. And again, with many characters in the MCU phase four, like Ironheart and Cassie and so many other people, it's like, it's very easy for you to gain powers and abilities and to just be a superhero and just nothing really worth taking a risk on since it comes very easily that's the way it seems um janet withholding information for as long as she did throughout the movie she could have told them after all those years that she came back from the quantum realm and all the, all the time that he spent walking around in the quantum realm so it's kind of like those annoying moments in tv shows where the character for example has this like medical illness that he recently gets he or she and they just withhold it from telling the group leader and it eventually messes up the mission that they were on so that's just a little nitpick right there i o i honestly did enjoy bill murray's performance as kryler i saw someone criticize that but it wasn't terribly acted and perhaps the character is bad but that wouldn't be a fault of bill murray it would be a fault of the writers writing the character i think and Modoc was honestly all right, in my opinion. I laughed at some scenes with him. Um, and how else do you also expect someone to look with an enlarged head? At first, when I saw the very first trailer that showed Modoc, I was actually skeptical because his appearance looked like a magnifying glass effect on his head. And I didn't like that one. I preferred having like an enlarged head. And it turns out that I was just looking at the trailer like incorrectly. It was just a wrong angle. So I'm actually pretty pleased with his appearance. Obviously, it doesn't look the best, but I just don't know how else you can make someone with a supersized head to look proportionate or look all right. And I also see a lot of people saying that this cannot be a weaker version of Kang. I mean, that this is a weaker version of Kang and that's why he lost. But I disagree. I don't think this can be a weaker version of Kang since he got exiled by the whole council of them. So why would a whole council, more than two people, way more than two people, band together to exile one person? So I think that's pretty clear that this is not a weaker version of Kang. And I say that I say that in relation to him being beaten by ants. Now I'm on the fence about that. I do agree with how he was defeated, but at the same time, I have to admit it was a little bit of shoddy writing. For example, a lot of people say that he was nerfed because he was sent to the quantum realm. And I don't know about that. Like, you're going to have to explain how the quantum realm can hinder the functionality of technology. 
especially that of what Kang possessed. And perhaps you can say that they sent him there for a reason, so we can assume that that's why it nerfed him. But I'll assume that the council sent him to the quantum realm because it is outside of space and time, and he has no way of actually escaping due to his multiversal power core engine being destroyed. At the same time, I'm willing to like believe, like my head con in head cannon, I'm willing to believe that he was nerfed, his technology was nerfed, and I know people point to him defeating the Avengers and, you know, multiple rebellions. I would say that they shouldn't actually have said that in the movie, actually, now that I think about it, because that way we we wouldn't have this like forced um forced representation of who he is meant to be if they had not said that in the movie. Because if he was defeated by ants, to me, he was caught off guard. He never expected super, you know, advanced ants rushing towards him. And it's pretty clear that the ants chewed up his technology. So I'm honestly fine with how he was defeated. And I'm sure he's going to be back too. But yeah, I'm 50-50% on it was shoddy writing. At the same time, it kind of made sense. Or you can think of it that way. Um, The next thing I want to talk about, yeah, there were some tiny cringy joke joke scenes uh throughout the movie for example that scene where kang is revealed and you know kang is like you're an interesting man scott lang and then you have scott say that he has a similar body type to thor i just don't know why like, it's about the dynamic and it's like you can't have a comedy character and a serious character just in the same you know in the same room talking that way uh, to me it has to be the same thing it has to be like unison. It has to be combined to one. Because then you just have an unbalanced mood in the film. Such as Scott making a joke and a reference to having a similar body type to, to Thor. And then Kang who's all about seriousness and getting his mission completed. And Kang att attacking Scott. Um, that That is also something that I criticize in the movie. He could have just let them leave still have the core engine and leave himself to um escape from the quantum realm after they left because i saw this in a youtube comment actually that like when scott and everyone else was about to leave he could have just let them leave because he would still have had the multiversal power core engine at the same time i saw a reply to that comment saying that maybe kang's ego was bruised and that's why he didn't want to let them leave and he probably couldn't like accept the fact that he had lost so i mean that's just my in-head canon that's what i'm gonna go with and two more things cassie reopening the portal a little too easily it just felt like a jump cut to her opening the portal and it was so abrupt um towards the end of the film but that also brings me to think that this is or it could be an alternate timeline i'm sure you've seen that theory circulating around that like after Scott escaped from the quantum realm, he didn't go back to his original timeline. He went back to a timeline ruled by Kang. And people are pointing to the people that were walking by Scott um, and looking at him a little different. I kind of disagree with that theory only because I think they were just looking at him a little bit differently because, again, he is famous. And it, it does kind of parallel the very first scene in the movie. At the same time, I'm willing to think that this is something sketchy at least going on since again that jump cut to cassie opening the portal was just very like abrupt or quick quick and i also wouldn't put it past me to think that kang after he got sucked into the multiversal core engine could have just like i don't know he could have still been alive had his technology gone back in time and then altered the timeline which would affect the movie present time but that's another thing to talk about. And finally, they also turned Scott worrying about Kang's death being the start of something terrible um, into a joke. They, it turned that into a joke. And I think you could have kept the momentum built up from the fight scenes and just from Kang as a character. You could have kept that in without having Scott like brush it off as a joke towards the end of the movie. But um, yeah, these are just some nitpicks about the film. I think it's definitely an enjoyable film for me, but it is flawed with writing, and I'm willing to to bet that like 
brick and morty writers cannot really write marvel movies or comedy and seriousness just doesn't mix that well but um yeah that's my review of the film movie um peace